G'day guys, Tills20 here and welcome back to Springwood. Today's episode's a little bit different than usual. I'm really focusing on detailing at one particular area, not really building a whole neighborhood like I usually do. Um, and I could have had a lot of fun doing it and it, it took me a really long time to actually nut out this entire project. Um, I had to come back to it a couple of different times. Uh, what I'm going to be building today is an amplifier, and I'm really basing this one off one that sits in Beverly Hills in Los Angeles. And I think it's really interesting, heaps of trees around it, seems to be nestled into this this hillside, which I think is thinks really cool. So I want to kind of incorporate a bit of that, that I got the best spot to actually stick it in, in Springwood, um, which is just around here. So like I said, this episode, this build took quite a while to produce. Um, I actually built this amphitheater, or well, half built it, well, actually quarter built it, um, probably even about a month ago. And I've just been really struggling with one particular um, idea of the project. And it's just, it's taken me until basically now, until I've actually figured out how to figure it, figure it out. Uh, what it is, is I could get the shape of the amphitheater how I wanted it, but I just couldn't find an asset on the workshop that really represented a seating arrangement um, to what I wanted. I really wanted to be create a bit of a round s seating position, I guess, um, so that everybody could kind of see where the stage is. And I also wanted it to be nestled into this hillside that's very much like the one that I just showed you in Beverly Hills. And the, the, the props that I was finding, the assets I was finding on the workshop just really, really didn't work. I, I tried a whole bunch of different ones. Um, sometimes the stairs were too big. Um, sometimes um, I could find seats, but like they were just individual seats, which meant I'd have to place down a thousand props, um, which I'm kind of a little bit conscious of because I just know that eventually I'm going to hit the prop limit and as you can see what I'm doing here I'm ac I've am i found a, a staircase that I really like and I'm just moving it around and putting it in different places and using the um, ground using the road to actually just give a bit of a guide of where I'm going to be placing them down and I chose this staircase from the workshop it works pretty well I mean it's a little bit fiddly because I mean as you can see behind the staircase it does actually push down the ground so it does leave this huge gap but I do find a bit of a technique to kind of cover that up so it's not so uh, not so gappy um, and man I was so frustrating using these staircase this these staircases because every time you'd decide to move them all together they'd all ch change shape and they would line up and I'm the kind of creator where I, I'm really particular, yeah, you'll see it here, I'll move it and it all just <laughs> changes shape. Um, yeah, that happened quite a lot. Yeah, I'm the kind of creator that I feel like I, I get really particular about certain areas and I can hear my head just going, man, let it go, let it go, you don't need to worry about how this looks, no one's going to notice. But when it comes down to it, I notice and it's I'm really doing this for myself. And if I know that they're not totally even staircase and they're not all matching up every single, every little seat isn't matching up to each other, it's going to kill me. So I, I definitely made sure it was all in line. And I, I, re I really don't know how other YouTubers do it with the high, like the high detailed YouTubers. I, I think I go into a bit of detail, but I mean, some people go into crazy amounts of detail and I don't know how they stay focused for so long. Um, I really came back to this project about three, four times just because um, I just get over it and I'd have to, um, yeah, I'd have to just take a bit of a chill and work on a bit of a different project. So that gap I was talking about with the staircase, how it left a bit of a gap between the edge of the mountain and the staircase, I. I just used this road here to draw a line, moved it using move it to come a little bit closer to the edge of the staircase. And then I just painted it with um, the ground texture mod and just changed it to a brown texture. Basically just getting rid of the um, original concrete layer there. The reason why I did that is that way I can kind of make it look a bit like 
like a dirt, like dirt on the ground. Um, and I can hide all that gap with these trees. Um, I, I've talked about it before, but trees are definitely my go-to filler of all my sloppy craftsmanship, I guess. Uh, every time I kind of do something that I think really doesn't fit or it's just a bit sloppy, I can just kind of cover it up with a bit of a tree. So kind of keen to get back into a bit more of the uh, tree foresty areas of Springwood because um, yeah, then I can actually justify plopping down a couple of extra trees. Um, really came in handy building this amplifier here. Just there I was plopping down a, a different type of staircase so that people could access the bottom and middle and top floor levels of the seating arrangement there. But the I really wanted to have a diff, I really wanted there to be another staircase, an actual staircase rather than seating. But it was just really out of proportion and it didn't really fit very well with the rest of the build. So I ended up ditching that idea and as you can see here I'm trying to use the vanilla footpath as a bit of a like a like another staircase to get up and down but it just didn't work so yeah like I tried a lot of different methods to make it look like people could access via staircases going up and down but it just wasn't working out so what I ended up deciding to do was use a a series of tunnels and this is something that I see in a lot of other theaters where people access the different layers from I guess tunnel networks that are underneath the underneath the seating and yeah like, I think it works out pretty well I, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out and using this footpath to kind of paint down where people will be walking around here I was yeah I mean <laughs> it was one of many nightmares of this build. Uh, I think mostly because when you when you're trying to when you're trying to use move it to shuffle this around all the footpaths and all the tunnels and all the staircases, trying to shuffle them around to put them into the right place, you're quite often just hovering over something you don't really want to be hovering over and you just want uh, it's uh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot I cut out of this build purely because it's just me re-deleting things and rebuilding. There's a lot of deleting and rebuilding. Um, yeah, so I, I tried to get rid of as much as that as possible. It was pretty brutal, like I said before. I don't really, yeah. I really have a lot of um, appreciation for those people who do really high detailed builds high detailed custom builds I really take my hat off to you guys I don't know how you can actually see through the whole thing um, and get it all done uh, but you know I guess I guess when you finally finish it you do have a bit of an appreciation for how it turns out um, I definitely have an appreciation for how this turned out um, again plopping down some trees to cover my sloppiness and I'm trying to get a different color tree in there as well. I didn't really want it to all be the same green. Um, I'm trying, kind of working on the idea that this is the outer skirts of Springwood and it's going to be a bit of a mix of forests, but also creeping off into a bit of a deserty area. I want there to be a bit of a mix of green and also incorporating a bit of the dryness that would be quite a big feature of um, the outskirts of Springwood. I'm also just putting in a couple of bits and pieces for a bit of finer details like I put that toilet block in over there and a bit of food outlets just to feed the hungry audience members but I'm also quite conscious that this isn't probably the biggest theatre in Springwood or it's definitely not. I've actually got a bit more of an amphitheatre in the hub of the city in the downtown a bit more enclosed um, you've probably seen in some of the screenshots and this area I think We'll probably just hold smaller, smaller bands, maybe even orchestras and I don't know, carol nights and if Mumford and Sons came out to Springwood or Chili Peppers did an acoustic set, I don't know. This is this is definitely out in the suburbs of Springwood, so I'd imagine, and the wealthy suburbs, so I'd imagine it'd just be holding mostly um, people from that area. So yeah, I'm just trying to keep it 
kind of low-key, but at the same time, um, I did want it to have a bit of a capacity to hold quite a lot. But that's pretty much it for the actual amphitheater. Stay tuned, and we're going to get into the car park. So what I'm doing at the moment is I've just basically nutted out where I want the car park to sit and the bus turning circle. I've actually finished pretty much the car park, might just do a couple little bits of detail here and there. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, um, it's, yeah, I mean I didn't want it to be too detailed, but I did want it to be really well nestled in the bush around here or the trees. Uh, like I said before, this area is quite foresty we're getting into a bit more of a foresty area of Springwood so a lot of these areas will be will actually have will have a lot of trees basically is what I'm trying to say um, the bus turning circle over there had a really had a lot of fun making um, it, I put a bit more detail into it eventually but I don't usually go into too much detail with my roads with my roads in Springwood like I'm kind of more focused on building an entire city and I think if I focused on the road layouts or even texturing roads or even like getting into the where all the all the lines sit and using all those traffic mods to make all the traffic behave in a certain way I I just I know for a fact I will not finish this city so I'm just kind of trying to stay clear of all that and every now and again I'll go into a bit of detail with with roads and like I, I, I do have quite a bit of fun doing roads, but I definitely don't go into as much detail as other YouTubers. Um, but in this actually instance, I do go into a bit of detail and had a lot of fun doing it. Right here, I'm building the entrance to the amphitheater. I was a little bit disappointed that I didn't leave myself with much room. I mean, it looks like I've got a little bit of room, but when I started playing with the path and realizing that there's a quite a big height difference. I really struggled with where I was going to sit the entrance and how people are going to access it. Um, and I, at first I wanted to put a ramp because I felt like that's how people, like we need, you obviously need ramp access and you need stairs. I, I guess I only really have stairs in this one, which is um, a real bummer. It's not very inclusive of me, but uh, 
yeah, I mean, that's this is space. I mean, I really ran out of space through this area. And using different heights in this game can be pretty annoying. I think when you pull it off, it looks awesome. It adds a lot more realism to the game, to your city. But when you're actually building, you kind of curse yourself for not making the entire land flat. But I do prefer... A, I do prefer a bit more of a challenge when it comes to this game and actually building with more slopes and more hills. So, I mean, it's definitely a bit of a challenge working with that. But uh, I think it, I think it, I think sometimes I can pull it off. And as you can see here, when you don't pull it off, you can just hide it using different effects. So here, there's this like an ugly mound of concrete, and I'm just gonna hide it using a garden. And the same over with that corner just there. I mean. Trees are just so perfect to hide all the crafty craftsmanship of things that I do. So I'm going to use a garden just to cover that little bad boy up. And so I'm pretty happy with how that entrance worked out. I think it, I think it's um, pretty convincing. I guess that's the whole point of the game is to convince that this is actually a realistic city. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And that little back storage area there, that's a bit, um, a bit industrious, industrious, industrial, I guess. Um, I created that because I wanted the back entrance to kind of a bit look like it, it holds a little bit of a workload. Uh, maybe some bands would come in there and that would be where the green room is and, um, maybe some trailers would come in in that area. I didn't really want it to look too crash hot. Um, but I wanted there to be a little bit of space so that trucks and buses can get in there too. While I'm building away and I'm running out of things to say, um, I will actually talk about re rejoining Instagram. <laughs> Instagram, so yeah, I mean, if you don't follow me on Twitter, um, I'm pretty active on there, basically rambling about what I'm up to and updates and the occasional screenshot and teaser but when I when I first started doing City Skylines stuff I was um was mostly on Instagram just posting videos and pictures and then I really dropped off that platform and um just took on Twitter but I actually want to come back to Instagram and upload a little, little bit more stuff in particular I'm going to treat my Instagram accounts as a bit more of a vlogging experience <laughs> and I know that sounds a bit dumb but what I want to what I mean by that is I'll be concentrating on more details of the city, areas that you probably have never even seen. There's areas that I'm constantly building but not actually putting into an episode because it's not enough material. So those little bits and pieces that you might have forgotten about just because it's probably like, you know, three months down the track that I've been building the city or areas you just have no idea existed. I'm going to be putting those little parts in and even little bits of detail that Every now and again when I'm shooting around the city and I just go, oh, that's a that's a sick little spot there. Um, I'm going to be uploading more of those pictures. I, want, I would like to be uploading every day. So if you've got Instagram, then definitely go and check me out over there. You can actually access those photos even if you don't have Instagram, just via the computer. Um, and yeah, I mean, just definitely feel free. Don't just feel free. Do it. <laughs> Come and follow me on Instagram. Um, and also Twitter, I mean, if you want some more Springwood updates and rambles about myself, can't wait in between videos, they're two definite platforms to follow me on.
This last part of the video is all about detailing the bus turning circle. Um, again, working on an area that's not flat, especially with the ploppable asphalt mod, is definitely a really big challenge. Uh, just constantly giving myself challenges in this game, uh, mostly due to the size of an area that I start building and due to the fact that I always build on an uneven surface. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just, that's just one of the perks of working with myself. And yeah, this is no exception. What I'm trying to do is I wanted that first little roundabout there just to be a bit of a turn in circle and then over here to make it into a car park. What I really love about the roads is that I really love that they're sunken, just that little, little touch. So I wanted to use the roads to plop down a car park, even though it's not a car park, it's actually a road, if that makes sense. I mean, I just painted it over using um, the ploppable asphalt mod, kindly made Roronix, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I haven't really seen cars use that road, which is which is good, <laughs> which is good because there's going to be cars parking there, well, buses, and. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's really, um, I think it's a really cool technique. I'm really happy that I built it that way. I think it works really nicely. And you'll see me here, I start painting down some of these lines. And um, I mean, this brings me to my, another, just to ramble about something else, um, something that I was talking about before. I, I'm trying to use as bigger lines as possible. It'd be much easier plopping down those tiny lines and making it all smooth and even just as you can see me doing here but you can just see every little circle there is just another prop just clocking onto the <laughs> onto the clock of props in my city and I'm just so conscious of it and um, I'm just I'm in, in constant fear of going over that prop limit and I've got some ideas for when I do hit that prop, prop limit I've got some um, ideas of how I can continue the city which is really good. I mean, like I, when I first heard that there was a prop limit, I just thought, well, I'm screwed. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally screwed. And I've heard people who have got much smaller cities than I do, and they're already over the prop limit, which just terrifies me. But I've got just a couple of techniques up my sleeve where I think I'll be able to maintain the city. I know I'll be able to maintain the city and go with the, man, the level of detail that I'm going with at the moment. So I'm not too worried, but at the same time, I'm very conscious that eventually, as I plop down something, it's just gonna stop and I'll just know that I am at that limit, <laughs> which I'm just a little bit a little bit afraid of every time I plop down something. Uh, you see me here just plopping down some of these road decals. They've adds, when I say road decals, I mean a worn down road decals. Man, they add so much to the roads. I, I really, really, really love them. Um, I, yeah, I love putting these ones down. I always forget that they exist, and then as soon as I start sticking them down, I just go, "Yep, now it's finished." Um, and I mean, it, it I, just popping them down in every little, just everywhere would be ideal. But um, I try not to go too crazy with them. Um, just put them down in the high detailed areas. And there is a mod actually out by TPD, TPD, TP, TBD, um, Stricto said the same problem the other the other day, so um, yeah, apologies if I'm butchering that name. But yeah, there's a great mod out at the moment that where you can change the road textures. Um, when it came out, I was just, yeah, I just couldn't believe it. We didn't have a mod like that already. It's perfect. It fits such a void in this game where you, the roads just all look exactly the same, all the same texture. Uh, and I'm currently using US roads here and the road is quite dark. Though in LA it's actually, the road's actually kind of light. So yeah, I mean, light is in kind of similar to what Australia is like. Australia, we don't have very dark tarmat. We have kind of a grayish color rather than dark gray. So. It's actually been really useful. I don't really use it in here. And in the cinematics, you can check it out. I've, I use a much lighter road texture. And I've also changed it on every different road. So every road is a little bit different. I'll go into a bit more about that in the next episode. It's, I think it adds a lot to this, to the city. And it kind of gives me a lot more options in terms of what I can achieve in terms of the roads. 
and I'm not having to plop down decals to make them look more worn down because I mean grayer roads look a little bit more worn down um, but anyway guys that that does lead me to the end of my rambles and my build I really appreciate you guys tuning in every week and leaving comments even though you're if you're sick of leaving comments please just say hello in the comments below it's always nice seeing an extra comment down there um, especially by the people who always seem to drop by it's always much appreciated um, thanks again for watching and I hope you have a good week and I'll see you guys in the next episode.